This is me. This is my beautiful wife, Sylvia, and this is Sylvia's idea of sailing. This is my dream of sailing and my hope to do a retirement project in 2029 circumnavigating the globe. This is Sylvia's response right now. I'm on a six-year quest to convince Sylvia this is a great idea and the clock is ticking down. So join me as I search for the perfect boat she will love and get all the ladies to subscribe and cheer her on. Welcome back to a special episode of Naval Gazing at Camp David. This week, we are gazing off into the future at a boat that has not yet been launched, but is so exciting that we just have to have a little look at the renders and the layouts that we've been given so far. I'm, of course, speaking of the Sea Wind 1370. As the future Ruby Rose 2, the Sea Wind 1370 is probably the most reviewed and covered pre launch in history. Neither La Vagabond with their new Rapido 60 or Gone with the Winds with their new HHOC 44 have provided such an in depth peek into the build process as Nick and Teresa have produced. With that said, and facing the intimidating expansive technical knowledge of Nick on this and almost any other boat, I am wading into our review with a certain trepidation. But here goes. Today, we are going to review its specifications, pricing and layout against three similar new vessels. Do a full tour asking, what would Sylvia say? Have a look at the used market for three to five year old comparables and finally, we're going to give it a day score against all the other yachts that we've looked at, knowing that Nick and Teresa have done this and chosen this yacht. So, a tad frightening. Having a look at the lines, I mean, she is an attractive vessel. You've got that nice little uh, sort of faux forward cockpit, beautiful reverse bows, uh, expansive carbon uh, cabin top. Uh, you know, the, the nice lines of the windows, I could do without those sort of iconic back slanted to shark gill things happening there. But that's all said, very, very nice. Not a lot you can complain about on this. Uh, the, the actual windage looks quite low. I like the vertical and straight glass versus the, um, the rounded glass. It would be extremely difficult to replace. Now, hopping on to the new comparables, we're looking at the Balance 442, we're looking at the uh, HHOC 44, the Aventura 45, and the Sea Wind 1370. Now you can see uh, the overall 1370 profile, very low and sleek. Um, the Aventura, of course, the, the largest of the bunch being uh, what it's meant to be. Uh, but that sea wind uh, and that extended um, rear cabin top or, or cockpit bimini is pretty outstanding. As we hop down now onto the cabin top itself, you can see, uh, I didn't have a line drawing of the 1370, but nevertheless, you can see the expansive area that's available for solar uh, without having to fly a panel off the back and ruining the line of the vessel. Uh, you've got uh, relatively short trampolines versus, say, the HH, but about the same as the 442. Uh, obviously, the Aventura being the smallest of the bunch, maximizing interior space. Speaking of interior, hopping into the saloon, you can see that the uh, Sea Wind uh, certainly is no slouch. Nicely laid out. Probably the smallest of the group by the looks of things. Again, you know, we haven't been on board. This is all very preliminary. Uh, the Aventura being by far the largest, uh, looks like I would say the OC is about the next. Um, and the Balance 442 versus the Sea Wind 1370, probably about the same when you looked at actual square footage. But the layouts in all of them, very nicely done, uh, very livable environments. 
as we hop then now into the actual uh, uh, cabins themselves and the hulls, uh, you can see the sea wind is a very nice balance of width versus length. Uh, the OC, very narrow. Uh, it promises good performance by the looks of things. The Balance 442, uh, about the same as the Seawind 1370, although the 1370 might be just a tad narrower. Um, the Aventura, of course, the 45 uh, being made for cruising pleasure, and of course it has those gorgeous athwartship berths. Now, having said that, uh, the Seawind and the Balance 442, hats off to them. They put in very nice athwartship berths, if the sea wind uh, uh, renders are any indication, uh, they probably have the lead on that. Very nice, and then they've done a, a sort of walk-in closet in the forepeak, although balance on the 442 has done one better by extending that access right to the very tip of the forepeak if you really want a walk-in closet. Looking now at the numbers. So uh, we are looking at the top line here, uh, base in Euro. So the 442 from balance, 915, it's pretty dear. Uh, the HH, 947, even more dear. Uh, the Seawind 1370 at 759 appears to be a significant bargain. Now, Seawind has been uh, 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 affectionately known as the more affordable Outremer. And, um, you know, overall, we'll look at everything here, but they really do look like they've done a very nice job here for the buck. Aventura is just unbelievable at 487, but it is not a performance cat. Um, sail away as we look at these, uh, the balance uh, at 1.8, the HH 1.9, the Aventura just under a mil, and the Sea Wind at 1.5. Uh, length overall, you've got the uh, HH at 49.7. Uh, I'm not sure if that, that must be with those aft uh, um, boards down uh, at the sugar scoops. Uh, the balance uh, then is um, 4429, exactly the same as the Aventura 4429. A uh, sea wind is, is second um, only to the uh, HH at 45. Now, length on the water line, this will be telling the tale here. The sea wind uh, takes the lead at 45 even. Uh, the next one, uh, it's a tie between Aventura and Balance at 4429 uh, with HH at 4357. So my guess is absolutely that 497 overall includes uh, the back hatches down. If we look at the um, upwind sailor, well, let's look at displacement first. So balance, uh, we got 11.85 ton. The HH at a svelte 9.65. Uh, the Aventura at a highly surprisingly light 12, 12 ton. And the Sea Wind uh, a little surprising at 12.13. Again, it's not bad. I mean, this is a, a large vessel, 12.13, uh, but the Aventura is lighter. Um, upwind sail area. So uh, here we're looking, uh, this is a surprise. Aventura, 125, leads the pack. Uh, the Sea Wind is next at 116, uh, followed by the Balance at 105, and taking up the rear is the HH at 100. Uh, now, as we look at the actual engines on board, uh, the leader being the Aventura at 45. Of course, it probably needs it, but the Sea Wind has 40 horse, which is really nice. Um, a tankage, I'm going to say that uh, surprisingly enough, the balance has it at 800 and 700 for fuel and fresh water, respectively. Sea Wind, a very respectable 600 liters each. Moving to the hull construction. So, we've got the Sea Wind E Glass with carbon fiber reinforcement, vacuum bag, closed cell foam cores with vinyl ester resin. That's a nice hull for a vessel of this price point. Uh, let's look at, say, the balance. We've got E Glass, carbon fiber reinforcement, vacuum bag, closed cell foam cores with a combination of polyester inner skin and vinyl ester outer. So the Sea Wind has it over the balance. Let's look at the HH. Epoxy infused e glass sandwich construction, barrier outside skin vinyl ester, anti-osmetic barrier, extensive use of carbon fiber reinforcement. So 
you know, HH, uh, and given the price it should be, is, is, the, is the lead there. But uh, the value for the dollar, uh, Seawind takes it by a long ways. Just for fun, let's look at the Aventura. Uh, multi-axial uh, fiberglass, PVC foam core resin. Um, underwater surface is made of monolithic laminate polyester, while the top sides uh, vacuum sandwich polyester laminate, uh, the whole thing made by resin infusion techniques. Uh, you know, again, uh, not bad at all. All foam core, uh, polyester, um, I'm, I wouldn't cry, especially at that price point. As we look at the indicators on sale area to displacement, uh, knowing that uh, highest score wins, the sea wind kicks it out of the park at 29.76. The next one, and here's an irony, is Aventura at 2596, then HH 2416, then Balance 2199. Now, if that doesn't make you set up and take notice, nothing will. Um, so, uh, you know, uh, the displacement to hull length, which is heaviness, here low, low score wins. This is where the HH kicks it. So 104 for the HH. However, the next in line is the Sea Wind at 118, followed by the um, Balance at 121, and the Aventura, as one would expect it to be, at 123.32, still not bad. Bruce numbers on all of them. Uh, you've got the highest on Sea Wind at 137, uh, then Aventura 128, then HH 123, and Balance 118. Eight. Now, before we see what Silvio would say, I thought I would do a quick comparative of what Seawind uh, 1600 renders looked like compared to the actual Seawind 1600 to see if these renders from the 1370 can be expected to look as good as they look when it's actually built. So here we are. We're looking at a render of the saloon and then the actual saloon of the 1600 looks pretty damn similar. Again, render of saloon and then actual saloon, there's not a lot of difference. I think the renders and the actuals meet up very, very nicely. So I would expect that what we're about to see will be what you see in the end. So what would Sylvia say? Hopping on the back, you've got a very nice transom set up here. Uh, the davits looking around the actual cockpit itself, nicely laid out. Um, you've got a, a very comfortable helming station there. Those windows go down so that you have clear visibility out the front and the side windows for your helming. Um, you've got a very nice uh, um, cabin or cockpit uh, ceiling, nicely fared. You've got the typical trifold door. Uh, good handholds there as you need them for safety. And remember, you can get this entire uh, cabin top in carbon. Very, very nice. So as we uh, continue our swing around, you'll see the inset um, uh, pot lights, which I really like, the windows so that you can see your sails, and down onto the actual uh, helm station. Now, this is where I diverge from Nick. And let's talk a little navel gazing here. I know that Nick and Teresa absolutely focused on helm position and protection. Not quite sure because they came off a monohull where they spent their entire time out the back in full exposure. But it seems everybody gets on a cat and they want complete protection. And that's what they got here. But to me, this is where Sea Wind missed the mark. They did not go with the Versa Helm set up here. I think the Versa Helm that both Outremer and Balance have done, Balance of course leading the pack with it, would have been a tremendous addition to this. I really don't like the distance that you would have to lean over that side hull to see down the hull and feel a connection with the water. And I don't like the idea of being forced to look through the, the saloon all the time when I'm piloting. Uh, so I think from a navel gazing standpoint, the uh, Versa Helm is something that Sea Wind should seriously consider adding to this design. One more a little point that I thought was uh, important to point out. This tri-fold door, look, you gotta fold it up, then you gotta hook it up, then you gotta wind it up. It just isn't as sleek as everybody would like to say it is. I think that what uh, Katana did on their new 50, what Neil does on their 51, 
uh, what um, Balance has done, what uh, Outremer have done with the, the glass doors that open well open, or even Fountain Peugeot, is a far cry better than that awkward trifold door. Sorry, I just don't buy it. If I want it down fast, I can't get it down fast. It's awkward. I probably won't lift it up as much as I'd like to because it's not easy to do. Uh, I think they should rethink that and honestly, just get rid of it. It's not a great idea. Moving back onto the um, cockpit, uh, again, uh, everything is laid out very nicely. The actual uh, helm stations themselves, that um, uh, contrasting color, I think it's absolutely beautiful. Uh, and the layout of all of your, um, uh, your, your um, electronics is excellent. You're not reaching through the actual uh, uh, helm wheel, which I think is great. Uh, lots of cup holders, uh, very comfortable spot, but wow, l having to lean out over that side deck, uh, not a big fan. Uh, looking into the, cock the saloon itself, really nicely laid out, especially for you know the overall space and shape that we're talking about. Now, just to give you a sense again of how real this render will look, that was a quick peek at the actual 1600. So I think these renders, I, I think you're going to be very, very pleasantly surprised when we see hull number one uh, at the first show. Uh, you've got all of your controls on both sides. The nice thing is you do have twin helm stations. If you had the Versa helm, you would have a single. Um, now, having said that, you could throw a, a, an Outremer style seat on the back of, of the alternate hull and uh, tiller, which would be really sexy and cool. Uh, looking around the actual saloon, very, very comfortable, very elegant, um, very light and airy. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm reading this render right, that, that the windows open in. It almost looks like they do, uh, but I guess we'll, uh, we'll know when we actually see it. The windows at the front definitely open up and out. Um, so uh, that would provide an incredible level of... Um, uh, ventilation through the cockpit. Uh, on second glance here, absolutely not. Those side windows do not open in. Sorry about that, folks. Uh, that would just be fair uh, fiberglass that we're looking at there with the shine. Um, I do like the vertical windows. I like the flat windows. I don't like curved windows. They're too difficult to replace if you have to. So uh, kudos to Sea Wind on this. Again, another quick pan of the real interior of the Sea Wind 1600 versus the render here. And I think uh, you're, they, they, they look similar. Uh, I think it's going to look awesome. Uh, into the side hulls for the master bath, it's a beautiful space. You have huge light and comfort. A nice open uh, dry uh, head with a beautiful shower. Um, I think they've done a tremendous job. Again, you've got those contrasting colors in some of the sections there. Little bits of attention to detail like that that I absolutely love. Huge window space, nice curves. Look at the curves on the bulkhead there. That was what I was talking about last week. I wish Fountain Peugeot, I wish Katana would, would jump on the whole curve bandwagon. I think they need to desperately. Um, having a quick look at this compared to the actual Seawind 1600, again, I think they're going to look extremely similar. So we've got a lot to look forward to on hull number one here. Uh, moving around, you've got a lovely little uh, seating area there. Uh, not huge, but you don't need huge. Uh, beautiful open windows, big open windows, nice ceiling treatment, nice indirect lighting all throughout the boat. Um, you've got a, a lovely little um, uh, stool there for uh, your makeup table. Look at the rounded corners in the cabinetry. Again, uh, Aventura does a beautiful job of this. Um, uh, Outremer does a beautiful job. I just don't get why Katana has gone with the ridiculous square corners. The, the layout of this master is absolutely stunning. I don't know who did the design on this, but their attention to detail just from the aesthetics is absolutely fantastic. From a practical standpoint, that ventilation hatch right above your head and then again in the, in the, in the hall is outstanding. The walk-in closet, bravo. 
I'm, I'm, I'm thinking a woman had something to do with this design because I, 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 that's an absolute must. I mean, we have to have our imaginary lifestyle. There's got to be room for the tux and the, and the sparkly dress to hang for our Monaco nights. So well done, Sea Wind. Well done. Probably Nick and Teresa who had something to do with the design here. Uh, again, a quick comparative to the actual 1600. I think everything is going to look extremely nice. See, we do such a beautiful, beautiful job on their cabinetry. Um, again, one more glance around. Just love the full access uh, that, uh, to the, the bunk so that it can be easily made. You can get in and out without disturbing your partner. Um, it is an absolutely beautiful space. The, the indirect lighting, they've really gone to town in the indirect lighting. And I've seen what that does when I was at the show on a boat that uh, had the indirect lighting, wasn't working, and then a boat that did have it working, it was outstanding. Again, nothing to sneeze at. I think they've done a fantastic job of giving it a sense of space and light. I love the little uh, settee at the foot of the bed. Uh, get your shoes on easily. Uh, lots of light coming in. Nice um, overhead hatch there uh, at, the, at the front of the bunk just above your head. It's not in the ceiling, but then again, there's an advantage to that in that um, you don't have to worry about uh, rain coming in. Here's a comparative to the existing 1600, a real 1600. Again, I think everything's going to look pretty darn similar. Um, really nice. Look at, again, the indirect lighting. Uh, I just think the ambiance in this uh, vessel is going to be nothing short of stunning. Tiny little LED pot lights all the way around. Whoever did the interior design, they really, really thought this through, uh, which, you know, isn't a strength of a lot of uh, catamarans. They're getting better, uh, but mostly the monohulls have evolved to a point where you've got these features. Now, this uh, passenger side hull, I think what they've done here is outstanding. They've created a berth, uh, uh, a secondary berth here, um, and they've created a, a very nice area uh, for all of your, um, you, you know, you've got a chest of drawers there, you've got a little uh, side table there, you've got the side bunk that you can access in, and then you've got a, a forward peak bunk um, that thankfully can be turned into a, uh, a workshop, which indeed Nick has done. I think using this four peak that is happening more and more, whether it's the Utremer 52, the 55, uh, what uh, Leopard did a long time ago, uh, even on the XS series, and certainly uh, here with the uh, Sea Wind, I think turning that four peak into a work area uh, and an alternate space is absolutely an outstanding idea. So we're again looking down on it. She's a handsome boat. There's no denying it. I think this is going to be a beautiful yacht. So let's have a quick look at pre-owned comparables. Our first yacht here is the Neil 47, a 2021, a one-year-old boat. Now, bear in mind, we're looking at US dollars here for our comparable, and on the sea wind, a base plus 50 takes us to 1138500. Uh, this Neil 47, one-year-old, uh, has a US value of uh, 465,000, uh, 466,000. Wow. Um, the only issue is the 47, the, the, the trimaran is great, but in my opinion, <clears throat> it really loses its allure once you drop below the 51. <clears throat> so um, I don't think I'd get Sylvia on board of a uh, Neil 47, regardless of the price delta. I would definitely get her on board uh, the 45 uh, Sea Wind uh, if it's half of what it looks like. Um, <clears throat> so. I'd have to go with the Sea Wind on this, even, even considering the price difference. Next up is our uh, Marsden TS42 or the ORC42. And we're looking at a, about a million bucks here versus a million one on the new Sea Wind. Uh, you know, again, for my application, it's going to be the Sea Wind. But holy mackerel, if I was an unsupervised husband with excess cash in a secret boathouse, I'd, I'd still have that ORC 42 sitting there for fun days. Moving next to an Outremer 45. We're looking at an 019, so it's a, a two, three-year-old boat. You're asking uh, just under 900 versus the 1.138. 
<clears throat> for a brand new uh, C Win 45. Uh, for my money, because of so many aspects, uh, I would do the Sea Wind. Although, um, you know, Riley sitting on the back of his 45 Outremer holding that tiller, looking up that side hull into the sunset, that's an image that will always be in my mind. So I'd be tempted, but I'd never get, I, I'd never convince Sylvia. So it would be the Sea Wind uh, 1370. Finally, we're looking at. Uh, the Naughty Tech 46 Open, and we're looking at about 700 uh, versus the uh, Sea Wind at 1.1. Uh, uh, the, the Naughty Tech 46 Open is a very attractive boat. Um, I doubt its performance figures are going to be what the Sea Wind is, and there are many aspects, including the Thwart ship berth, the uh, flexible forward uh, peak cabin. Um, and you know several other factors that I really do like about the Sea Wind. So I would probably take the hit and buy the Sea Wind. Okay, moving on to the preliminary Dave score. So the Sea Wind 1370, not surprisingly, does extremely well. Uh, we're looking at the interior uh, elegance at an eight. Um, and, uh, you know, it all depends on how the renders measure with the actual, but I, I think you're fairly certain at an 8. Uh, exterior elegance at, at a 7. Uh, the interior comfort at a 7. Exterior comfort at a 6. You know, you, you have a faux front cockpit. You don't have anything up on the cabin top as far as lounging area. So uh, give it a 6. Uh, quality, uh, I'm hoping it's going to be an 8, uh, similar to the rest of their vessels. Uh, I mean, <laughs> we've all heard Nick expound week after week. Gosh, Seawind nailed it out of the park when they got him on board. Uh, and then Lazy Sailor, give it a 7. All the lines come back. There's nothing really spectacular. Condo, I'm going to give it a 7, even though it's a 45. It really has a nice feel. That walk-in closet, the walk-around berth, uh, the, the flexible forward peak cabin. Uh, really, I think they've done a brilliant job in a small envelope. Uh, geek score, give it a six. There's nothing really geeky, interesting about it. There's no Versa Helm. There's no uh, 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 dinghy platform. There's nothing of that. Uh, value for the money, I'm going to give it a seven. It could even go higher than that um, just because of whatever the final uh, uh, result is like. So there it is. We're sitting at 71 ahead of the Neil 51 just by one point. Uh, behind the Leopard 40, no, equivalent to the Leopard 45 and the Aventura 37, the Katana OC, the Du 4 48. Um, I, of that bunch, uh, I would definitely put the Sea Wind at the lead. Um, and, you know, again, I'd argue with myself that it should be a 72 or a 73 uh, because I, I think it's a, a really, really nice boat. Well, there you have it. A uh, future look at a beautiful new yacht, hopefully coming in the next six months. Uh, and uh, hopefully haven't offended Nick or any of his viewers. Uh, I, love the, I love the vessel. It's not a perfect fit for me or my application, but man, they're coming close in a small envelope. So, cheers, and let's see you here back here next week.